sit back and listen. It's time for License to Practice by IELTS Medical. Hello and welcome to another episode of Season 2 of License to Practice from IELTS Medical. Today we will be speaking with a who is a UK registered nurse but has taken a completely different route and gone down the education route. She works as a lecturer. So it's really nice to speak to somebody who has taken this completely different route and to explore the other options that are available if you decide to become a UK registered nurse. So let's give her a call and don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Um, thank you so much for um, coming on the podcast and having a chat with me and sharing your experience. Um, if you could just start by telling us a little bit about you and how uh, who you are. Okay, thank you for um, getting to know more about me. My name is... Um, I'm a nurse back home in Nigeria and even... Um, I have experience of over 11 years. Um, well, my background um, has always been nursing. Yes, uh, I, I did the science courses uh, during the elementary days. And then um, in the university, I, I, I had my background in Nigeria um, at School of Nursing um, in Nigeria. And then... Uh, before I moved to the UK in 2015, when I decided to do my degree. So I started with my top-up degree uh, at the University of Bedfordshire and moved on to do my master's and then presently doing my PhD. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What, what are you doing your PhD in? <laughs> Uh, my PhD is in um, frailty screening in elderly people. So I'm mm-hmm. evaluating the healthcare professional's view on frailty screening. Uh, looking at the population of the elderly people mm-hmm. um, is quite high within the UK. And so it was very important to see how we could capture them on time to prevent um, illnesses, um, mm-hmm. disabilities, fracture considering the fact that NHS is spending so much on um, treating elderly people with uh, hip fractures and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So it was very important to um, look into how can I be able to add into the elderly community in such a way that we'll be able to identify the risk of them falling, for example, or having any form of illness. So yeah, that's what my study is really looking into. Wow, that's so interesting. That is so interesting. Well, good luck with it. Um, Thank you. So you said you moved, so you moved to the UK in 2015 and did your top-up degree. So were you already, you were already qualified as a nurse before you moved over? Yes, I I had my, um, so we call that um, diploma, Mm -hmm. sort of. So, which I did three years back home in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. So I was already a registered nurse with the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria. Yeah. Um, I worked um, at different um, organizations. So I worked uh, with the Lagos State's government, mm-hmm. so which is like our government hospital uh, mm-hmm. back home in Nigeria. I, I did work there for over three years, um, close to four years, mm-hmm. if I can remember. And Prior to that time, I did work with um, private organizations as well mm-hmm. uh, within different facilities. So um, within the space of five years or six years, I was able to you know, acquire a lot of experience from both the private organization and yeah. the government hospital as well. Yeah. So how come you um, decided to do another degree um, before becoming registered as a nurse in the UK? Uh, okay, that's because um, whilst I was doing my, um, you know, my registered nursing back home in Nigeria, I've always mm-hmm. had the um, vision for me, you mm-hmm. know, to be able to look forward to coming up, getting, 
I wouldn't say getting my degree, but of course, promoting my career. You know, mm-hmm. I was that career advanced person that wanted to just always, I'm grieving. Yeah. And I really wanted to be to the very end. So I, I was looking forward to coming up with degrees, considering the fact that my lecturers then at School of Nursing, they were very um, particular mm-hmm. about um, getting enough degrees. Not, not like because of the degrees, but you moving nursing from where it is to yeah. where it should be. Yeah. You know, there was this um, a bit of redundancy in terms of the way nurses were looked at mm-hmm. at the time. And that was partially because most nurses were not pushed well, will I say they were not encouraged to actually go for their degrees. So yeah. after the RN, they just go for their specialization, say midwifery mm-hmm. or psychiatry, and you know that that would be it for them. Yeah. So, but for me, I I wanted to change the the narrative. So I was mm-hmm. looking forward to getting a bit of the degree so that I could advance in my career. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was a personal choice then. It wasn't, yeah. yeah. It was a yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good job you did it because then you've done your masters and your PhD. So, wow, you've been working. Yeah, you've been working yeah. hard. Again, let me add that. Um, sorry to cut you. Let That's me okay. add that. Um, mm-hmm. With the masters, mm-hmm. um, I think that the degree is quite important. Yeah. Because you can get a master and a PhD. That wasn't planned. Right. So in the course of doing my master's, uh, um, I was fortunate to have a, a good supervisor, uh, mm-hmm. Professor David Houston, and he was able to tell me a lot of advantage I would have if I consider, you know, doing my PhD. And mm-hmm. um, being my supervisor, of course, he observed that I was, you know, coming up with good grades. I actually mm-hmm. had a distinction in my dissertation within my master's. Congratulations. And I was still focusing on elderly people. Mm-hmm. And so he felt going ahead, you know, moving you forward to uh, doing a PhD would just be fantastic, really, mm-hmm. you know. And that was how... And then you PhD just ended up. About. So <laughs> I didn't really plan. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. The PhD, but yeah. Wow. I, I was able to um, get sponsorship with that as well Mm -hmm. so that was really good yeah Yeah, well it sounds like important research so I'm not surprised (laughs) yeah Yeah. Central London Auskey or London Hospital Auskey you decide our Central London purpose-built NMC Auskey course and practice rooms include all of the equipment you need to practice for your NMC Auskey exam you get the same expert team by your side, the same expertly prepared materials, and now a dedicated space built just for our international and return to practice nurses. Learn more at www.oskeynurses.com. So the, you you moved over. You doing your you doing your top up degree. Did you do that alongside your um? NMC registration or had you already done that or did you do that afterwards? Okay, so that's quite an interesting question because now okay. I'll be reflecting on my journey in terms yeah. of um, getting my NMC pin because mm-hmm. that's quite a different journey entirely. Mm-hmm. You know, um, before I moved away from Nigeria, I did have an idea about how the process of getting your NMC pin. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I was hoping that whilst doing my um, BSc, uh, maybe it, it would come with it in terms of I will be getting the degree and the pin towards yeah. the end. But for some reasons, uh, I, I I was informed that oh no, you can't. You do your degree is just for your degree. You need to go through the different routes for. Uh, acquiring your pin so I started um, the process but of course it was quite a challenging process Mm. in the sense that I needed to um, start preparing alongside with my degree programs you know wow so you Um, did do them at the same time uh, then yeah as I was yeah as I was studying for my degree programs I was also studying for the NMC pin and that's because of the English uh, mandatory um, yeah 
requirements that um, most especially the IELTS, mm-hmm. it was quite difficult to go pull that through, to be honest. But eventually mm-hmm. I did pull through. And um, yeah, and for me, that was quite interesting. Again, one thing I would like to stress out, you know, for any international nurse that is looking forward to coming to the UK, mm-hmm. I would actually really want to let them know that um, it could be quite challenging, most especially with the English requirements. I don't think with the um, nursing courses itself, that's like the CBT and mm-hmm. the OSCE. I don't think it's something you wouldn't be able to go through, considering that you have the, um, you've gotten the background knowledge back home yeah, of course. from wherever you're coming from. But then I think the biggest challenge so far, you mm-hmm. know, and this is even based on the fact that I've been able to talk with students and Mm -hmm. I deal with students every day is still the challenge of uh, the English exam. So personally, I'd like to advise them um, if you could start practicing early, Mm -hmm. just helps you to get through that hurdle much more easier than leaving it till the end. Yeah. You know, so when you're ready to come in, so that, that makes it a bit harder what did you do then to prepare i know it's obviously quite different for you because you were doing a degree <laughs> also so you had quite a lot going on but what what sort of yeah, things did you do <laughs> yeah <laughs> what sort of things did you do yeah. then to help with the with the nmc uh, registration exams exams mm. okay um with the nmc registration exams um that was quick you know it was quite straightforward mm. you know i was able to um, get a lot of materials from the NMC website. Mm-hmm. So um, I I did a lot of practice questions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, to be honest, I didn't register so much for a, a program like mm-hmm. with any of the um, facilities in terms of the CBT. But then for the OSCE, I had to register with IELTS Medical. Mm -hmm. So uh, whilst I was trying to do a research on where can I get the um, best place to do my practice for the Mm OSCE in terms of having to see those equipments, getting to practice myself, and even with guidance from the tutors there. Mm -hmm. So it was was very good to see, to, to have used the IELTS Medical to go through that process. They made it much easier because uh, we had this three days packed course mm-hmm. and then we had our trainers from nine to five. So it was really tedious, but then it was yeah. it was quite interesting because I mean, after the practice, I was able to go for my exams and that was it. I passed it at one sitting. So, oh, well yeah. done, yeah. 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 Um, so obviously you um, do something a little bit different now. You teach, do you? You're a tutor rather oh, than... Yes. Yeah. Do, do you <laughs> practice as well? Do you work um, in practice as well or you don't do that at all? Do you just, do you teach? What What do you do? Um, at the moment, I don't... Um, so prior to getting the lecturing job, I did practice, mm-hmm. okay, so I did practice with um, uh, Barchester Nursing Home, mm-hmm. um, I did that for a while, not too long, because of course I already identified my passion with lecturing and tutoring, so mm-hmm. I had to build that up, because yeah. um, whilst I was doing my PhD, I forgot to mention, I was also tutoring by the side, you know, I was a graduate teaching assistant. Wow. Um, yeah. At the University of Bedfordshire, yeah. So I did that for about two to three years mm-hmm. uh, before COVID came in. And so I had to, like, you know, yeah. then look for a proper, proper uh, uh, lecturing job, mm-hmm. uh, which um, at the moment I'm lecturing at Coventry University. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a very lovely journey because. Um, like everything else, it's it's always challenging. But then, I think the passion for me mm. is what that has brought me this far, you know. And then mm. I I also have a lot of support system in terms of my family. Yeah. So again, that really helps. So uh, yeah. So it's 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 been wonderful. 
Yeah, it sounds like it has. It sounds like it has. You've done really well. And it's interesting um, to get this perspective on it, actually, because 90% of the time, the people that I talk to and we have on this podcast go straight into practice uh, and stay stay, um, practicing. And it's just I think really nice as well to speak to somebody that's that's gone down a different route so that people listening know that there's other options you know the option is there to do that as well so yeah, thank you for that, you're yeah. very correct about that because I, I also really want to enlighten people more on that mm. you know to be honest um, you, I think with the nursing profession the, the problem I would point out is the fact that people restrict themselves a lot yeah um we shouldn't be limited by anything because again thinking about it the world has gone really global um Mm -hmm. there's a lot of advancement a lot of technology and i i would think that nurses should begin to look forward towards um meeting up with other professionals in terms of, of um what they could attain or their achievements as well so encouraging more more nurses to also think about other aspects not just the clinical aspect to be honest yeah education aspect is very important because of course if we don't have enough educators then we may not have a lot of nurses out there to be honest well yeah exactly um, yeah so looking at the aspects and there are other aspects like the researchness you know i i there are a lot of i had the option of actually being a research nurse as well mm-hmm. but then for me i felt because i already had my passion with lecturing so i would like to share more knowledge with, with nurses out there so mm-hmm. it's just something to look into i mean there's no restriction now and i also came across the informative nursing um informative health nursing so that is um, a nurse that is within the IT setting thinking of ways to improve um, care and delivery to patients through okay. nursing but of course using the IT to do that so mm-hmm. all of these things I believe we should start exploring you know we, we shouldn't be limited to anything at all yeah there's so many options so many options and it's yeah, definitely yeah. I think yeah nice to hear somebody that's done that (laughs) somebody that has gone down a completely different route um well look thank you so so much for coming on i've really enjoyed um chatting to you i've yeah it's been really interesting do you have any final words of advice for anybody that might be thinking of um starting the process of becoming registered in the uk um i uh, the advice i have for them is um first of all make sure you get a good um um, will I say a good tutor mm-hmm. center like the IELTS Medical um, that will guide you through this process. Again, don't 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 believe you know it or you know the process because um, I've I've happened to meet students that think they know the process and just to find out at the end that they don't, they, yeah. they kind of fail and we sit the, the exam. So I don't think that's a wise way to go about it. Yeah. I believe if you want to start the process, do it in such a way that um, you, you feel much more prepared. Again, what IELTS Medical does is they make you prepared, mm-hmm. um, give you a lot of confidence uh, for your exam so that you don't get there and you know, become too anxious or nervous. So mm-hmm. again, if you know the knowledge, knowledge is power. And of yeah. course, if you if you have that knowledge, you go into your exam room with a lot of confidence. That's one thing I know. So I mm-hmm. would advise anybody that wants to come to the UK uh, and register as a nurse. I mean, go through the process of studying. You mm-hmm. have to be focused, uh, persistent, um, and of course, um, go through the right channel great yeah i think that is great advice yeah well thank you so much um for for coming on again and yeah good luck with the rest of your phd and i hope you have um a great week thank you very much i do appreciate having this conversation with you Bye. 
Thank you so much for listening. I really hope that you enjoyed our chat. I certainly did. I found it really interesting and I think it was really nice to get um, a whole other perspective from somebody that has gone down a completely different route and also it does show that there are a lot of different options when you become registered here in the UK. I, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. And as always, to your success.